Hi, my name is Shinka. Welcome to my channel. This paw you're seeing right here is Alex. He's taking a nap right here. Hi. We have been reading The Warriors Into the Wild by Aaron Hunter, and we're on chapter 13. We left off a lot of cat drama. And you know, our life obviously is way more important, but sometimes the drama of fiction characters, well, even if just for a few minutes, maybe you forget about how awful life is, really. So we left off some information. Blue Star is going to go to this moonstone that glows in the dark. And Ravenpaw apparently did something Tiger Claw didn't like by how he retold the story. Okay. Firepaw greeted Ravenpaw as he reached the apprentice's den, but Ravenpaw hardly seemed to notice him. Instead, he pushed his way inside the den without a word. Firepaw got up to follow him when he saw Lionheart approaching. Well, meowed the ThunderClan deputy, striding up to the apprentices. It seems that Firepaw, Graypaw, and Ravenpaw are about to reach another important stage in their training. What's that? meowed Graypaw, looking excited. Blue Star wishes you three to accompany her on their journey to the Moonstone. Lionheart didn't miss the look of disappointment on the faces of Dustpaw and Sandpaw, because he added, don't worry, you two. You'll make the journey soon enough. For now, ThunderClan needs your strength and skill at camp. I will remain here as well. Firepaw looked past Lionheart to his leader. She was moving from one group of warriors to another, yelling instructions to each. Why had she chosen him for this journey? He wondered. She wants you to rest now, Lionheart continued. But first go to Spotted Leaf and collect the herbs you will need on this expedition. It is a long way and you will need something to give you strength and quell your appetite. There will be little time for catching prey. Graypaw nodded and Firepaw dragged his gaze away from Blue Star and nodded as well. Where is Ravenpaw? asked Lionheart. He's in his nest already, replied Firepaw. Good. Leave him to sleep. You could fetch herbs for him, meowed Lionheart. Rest well, you leave at dawn. He flicked his tail and walked back to Blue Star's den. Well then, meowed Sandpaw, you better go and get Spotted Leaf. Firepaw listened for sourness in her voice, but there was none. There was no time for jealousy now. All the cats in the clan seemed to be united against the threat from Shadow Clan. Firepaw and Graypaw walked quickly towards Spotted Leaf's den. The fern tunnel was dark, not even the full moon penetrated its thick covering. Spotted Leaf seemed to be expecting them as they emerged into a moonlit clearing. You have come for some traveling herbs, she meowed. Yes, please, Firepaw answered. And I think Yellow Fang probably is going to need some more poppy seeds. She seems to be feeling her wounds. I will take her some after you've gone and your traveling groups are ready. Spotted Leaf indicated a pile of carefully made leaf wraps. Enough for the three of you. The dark green herb will stop your hunger pains during the journey. The other will give you strength. Eat them both just before you leave. They're not as good as fresh prey, but the taste won't last long. Thanks, Spotted Leaf, meowed Firepaw. He leaned down and picked up one of the parcels, and as he bent his head, Spotted Leaf stretched over and gently rubbed his cheek with her nose. Firepaw breathed in her sweet, warm scent and purred his thanks. Graypaw picked up the other two and the friends turned and headed back through the tunnel. Good luck, Spotted Leaf called after them. Travel safely. They arrived at the entrance to their den and dropped the bundles. Well, I just hope those herbs don't taste too revolting, muttered Graypaw. It must be a long way to the Moonstone. We've never been given herbs before. Do you know where it is? Firepaw asked. 
Beyond clan territory at a place called Ice Stones, it lies deep underground in a cave we call Mother Mouth. Have you ever been there before? Firepower was impressed that Great Paw knew so much about this mysterious place. No, but all the apprentices have to make the journey there before they become warriors. The thought of becoming a warrior made Firepaw's eyes gleam with excitement, and he couldn't help standing a little taller. Don't get your hopes up. We still have to finish our training, Greypaw warned as of reading his thoughts. Firepaw looked up through the canopy of leaves at the stars glittering in the black sky above. Moon high had passed. We should get some sleep, he meowed, but he couldn't imagine being able to sleep with the thought of tomorrow's adventure spinning through his mind. Attending the gathering? A journey to the Moonstone? How far his kitty pet life seemed now. Chapter 14 The cold air chilled Firepaw's bones as blackness wrapped itself around him. He could hear nothing, and his nostrils were filled with the musty scent of damp earth. Out of nowhere, a brilliant ball of light flared in front of him. Firepaw ducked his head, screwing up his eyes against the glare. The light shone, dazzling coldly like a star. Then it blinked out, disappearing as quickly as he had come. The darkness fell away. Firepaw found himself in the forest. He felt comforted by the familiar smells of the woods. He breathed in the moist green scents and calmness flowed through his body. Without a warning, a dreadful noise burst from the trees. Firepaw's fur bristled. It was the screeching of terrified cats racing out from the bushes up ahead. Firepaw recognized the thunder crying pelts as they fled past him. He stood rooted to the spot, unable to move. Then came great cats, huge, dark warriors, their eyes glittering cruelly. They thundered toward him, pounding the earth with their massive paws. Their claws unsheathed, and out of the shadows, Firepaw heard a high, desperate cry filled with grief and rage. Graypaw! Firepaw woke, horrified. His dream vanished, leaving his ears ringing and his fur standing on end. And as he opened his eyes, he saw the face of Tiger Claw peering into the den. Firepaw leaped to his feet, instantly alert. Something wrong, Firepaw? asked Tiger Claw. Just a dream, Firepaw mumbled. Tiger Claw gave him a curious look, then growled. Wake the others, we leave shortly. Outside the den, the sky glowed with the new dawn, and dew sparkled on the ferns. It would be a warm day once the sun was up. But the early morning dampness reminded Firepaw that the time of leaf fall was not far off. Firepaw, Graypaw, and Ravenpaw quickly gulped down the herbs that Spotted Leaf had given them. Tiger Claw and Blue Star sat watching them ready to leave. The rest of the camp was still asleep. Ugh, complained Graypaw. I knew they'd take... Taste bitter, though I couldn't eat a fat, juicy mouse instead. These herbs will keep your hunger at bay longer, answered Blue Star, and they will make you strong. We have a long journey ahead of us. Have you eaten yours already? Firepaw asked. I cannot eat if I am going to share dreams with Star Clan at the Moonstone tonight, replied Blue Star. Firepaw felt his paws tingle when he heard these words. He was itching to begin his journey. With the dawn's light and the familiar voices, the terror of his dream left him. All that remained was the memory of the brilliant light, and Blue Star's words sent a renewed thrill of excitement through him. The five cats made their way through the gorse tunnel and out of the camp. Lionheart was just returning with the patrol. Safe journey, he meowed. Blue Star nodded. I know I can trust you to keep the camp safe. She answered. Lionheart looked at Graypaw and dipped his head. Remember, he yelled, you are almost a warrior. Don't forget what I have taught you. Graypaw looked back at Lionheart with affection. I will always remember Lionheart, he yelled, nudging his head against the tabby's broad golden flank. They retraced their route to four trees. This was the quickest way to pass into Wind Clan's territory. High stones lay beyond. As Firepaw bounded down the side of the glade towards the great rock, 
He could still smell the scents of last night's gathering. He followed the others through the grassy clearing and up the slope on the other side into wind clan territory. The bushy slope became steeper as they climbed, rockier, until the cats had to leap from boulder to boulder up the side of a craggy cliff face. Firepaw paused when they reached the top. Ahead of them, the ground flattened out into a wide plateau. The wind blew in a steady gust that rippled the grass and bent the trees. The soil was stony, and outcroppings of bare rock dotted the landscape here and there. The air still carried scents of wind clan, but they were stale, much fresher, more alarming, with the pungent markings of Shadow Clan. All clans are entitled to safe passage to the Moonstone, but Shadow Clan seems to have no respect for the warrior code anymore. So be alert, warned Blue Star. We mustn't hunt outside our territory, though. We'll follow the warrior code, even if Shadow Clan doesn't. They set up across the plateau as the sun rose into the sky. Following the tracks through the heather, Firepaw had grown used to living under a canopy of trees. Without their shade, his flame-colored pelt felt heavy and hot, and his back seemed to burn. He was thankful for the steady breeze blowing from the forest behind. Suddenly, Tagaclaw stopped dead. Watch out, he hissed. I smell a shadow climb patrol. Firepaw and the others lifted their nose, and sure enough, the scent of Shadow Clan warriors traveled on the wind. They are upwind. They won't know we are here if we keep moving. Neon Blue Star, but we must hurry. If they move ahead, they'll detect us. It's not far to the edge of Wind Clan territory now. They, paw they moved on quickly, leaping over the rocks, pushing their way through the sweet smelling heather. After a few steps, Farpaw sniffed the air and glanced over his shoulders on the lookout for Shadow Clan patrol. But gradually, the odor grew fainter and fainter. They must have turned back, he thought with relief. Finally, they reached the edge of the uplands. The landscape changed dramatically, shaped and altered beyond recognition by two legs. Wide earth tracks, crisscrossed green and golden meadows, small woods dotted the land, and two lake nests, houses, were scattered here and there among the fields. In the distance, Firepaw saw a familiar wide gray path, an acid tang that had stung his throat drifted on the breeze. Is that the thunder path? He asked Graypaw. Yep, replied Graypaw. It runs up from Shadow Clan territory. Can you see high stones behind it? Firepaw looked at the distant horizon. The land rose sharply up to a point, jagged and barren. So we have to cross the thunder path then? Yup, mailed Graypaw. His voice was strong and confident, almost cheerful, as he faced this difficult journey. Come on, Blue Star meowed. She bounded forward. We can be there by moonrise as long as we keep up pace. Firepaw followed her with the others down the hill, away from the black hunting grounds of Wind Clan and into the lush of Two Leg territory. Keeping near the hedges, the cats walked on. Once or twice, Firepaw could smell prey scent from the bushes. But Spiderleaf's herbs had succeeded in taking the edge off his hunger. The sun was still hot on his back, even in the shadows of the head grows. They skirted a two-leg nest. It stood on the wide expanse of hard white stone, with smaller nests around the edges. Keeping low, the cats crept past the fence that surrounded the white stone. A sudden barrage, barking and snarling, made them spin around. Dogs! Firepaw's heart missed a beat. He arched his back, fur bristling from nose to tail. Tiger Claw peered through the fence. It's all right. They're tied up, he hissed. Firepaw looked at the two dogs scrabbling on the stone, barely ten tail lengths away. They were nothing like the pampered pets that lived in the gardens of Two Leg Place. These creatures stared at him with wild, killing eyes. They strained at their ties and reared up on their hind legs. They growled and they barked, their lips drawn back to reveal huge teeth, until the shout of an unseen two leg silenced them. The cats moved on. So, I'm going to leave it there. 
So Firepaw had a very interesting dream. Now, in this series, dreams are important. They do mean something. In their belief system, sometimes dreams come from Star Clan. They believe that Star Clan, their ancestors talking to them. The medicine cats have dreams. Sometimes these dreams have shown things that will happen or have already happened. So I just want you to keep that in mind. Um, anytime they actually go through the trouble of describing a full dream in these books, there's meaning behind it. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, this weekend, I am going on a trip. I will have my phone. I am taking this with me. And I am going to attempt to upload this weekend. But I do apologize ahead of time that there may be a day or two that I miss. Um, we're doing a very long drive from North California all the way down to Southern California. Um, it's a work thing we have to do as well as families down there, so why not? I hope you have a good day though.